Yo, what is up guys? It is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy back in today with another fantasy football video. In today's video, I got the week 12 running back rankings. Now, these rankings are based off of PPR. Obviously, if you're on half PPR, it's going to be slightly different. And if you're on standard, it's going to be completely different. So leave a comment down below if you got any questions. Now, before I get into these week 12 running back rankings, I'd like to give you guys a word from my sponsor, OverlayDFS.com. OverlayDFS.com is my favorite way to play daily fantasy football. Now, my favorite game on this website is the progressive game, where every single week, if the bonus does not get hit, the money keeps on rolling and rolling and rolling on until you eventually, and someone hits that beautiful 12-0 to get that progressive bonus. As you can see here in the $22 game, which is the best game to play this week, if you go 12-0 and and all those stars align, you can get over 8 grand winning in that game. Now, if you don't end up going that beautiful 12-0, don't you worry, because if you're in the top 10%, you get nine times your buy-in at all levels. $2.5, you get $18. $22 entry, you get $180. And if you enter the $109 game and you hit that beautiful top 10%, you get nine times your money at $900. Now, there's also another game with best record wins. You enter $11, the top 10% get $90, and that top prize, you get $100. So it's going to look beautiful on there right now. But obviously, that price is going to keep going up as more people join and enter. Pretty much, you're not even playing against anyone. You're pretty much just playing against yourself. You're playing against the board, and you got to make sure that you get just a good enough record to hit that money. Now, I'm going to explain how it necessarily works right here this week. Now I'm going to join the $22 game. Pretty much how it works. All you got to do is pick 12 of these players out of a huge selection of players and plus three alternates. So you got to hit that beautiful 12-0 record to get that huge bonus. Or obviously you can get nine and three or seven and five. It's different every single week. That would make you hit that beautiful and get that nine times your money. So one of the games here and one of the strategies I like to do is I like to go with Drew Brees over Russell Wilson here. And then I scroll down to the wide receivers and I select Michael Thomas because I'm going to be stacking my quarterback with my wide receiver. That is my favorite thing to do on this website. So make sure you guys check out OverlayDFS.com. Link down below in the description. Goodbye, my friends. And we are back. Make sure to check out OverlayDFS.com. Link down below in the description. Let's get right back into it. Week 12 running back rankings. My first running back ranked in this video at number one is Christian McCaffrey. Christian McCaffrey is always going to be my number one ranked running back based strictly off the fact that the ceiling for the ceiling, I should say, for Christian McCaffrey is so high. He scores so many points every single week that is almost ridiculous. He has only had one game this year that I would consider a dud. Every other game has been complete and utter fucking dominance. He has been playing out of his mind. And if you think that you could rank him anywhere except for number one, you are very crazy. Okay, Christian McCaffrey is going to play amazing this week against the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans. At number two, we have Big Dick. Nick, Nick Chubb this week going against the Miami Dolphins. Nick Chubb is going to go from a one-third Chubb the last couple of weeks all the way to a full Chubb completely erect straight into that Miami Dolphins blowhole. The Miami Dolphins are going to get railed by Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb is going to be putting up so many fucking fantasy points that you're going to find it outrageous. I love Nick Chubb this week against a sorry Dolphins defense. And number three, we have Mr. Alvin Kamara going against the Carolina Panthers. Now, Alvin Kamara gets so much of the work through the passing game, through the running game, that it is impossible to rank him outside of the top 10. Against the Carolina Panthers, a defense that is prone to getting torched by every single position. The Panthers' defense is not all that good, and Alvin Kamara should be able to eat in these games. Now, obviously, it seems like Drew Brees has been feeding Drew, Drew Brees has been feeding Michael Thomas a lot more than uh, what I would have predicted, but that doesn't matter because Alvin Kamara is still getting his, and Alvin Kamara is still going out there performing on a weekly basis, so I like him this week against the Carolina Panthers. And number four, we have Mr. Saquon Barkley going up against the Chicago Bears in Chicago. Now, Saquon Barkley, I Honestly, has really disappointed thus far this season, and mainly because of the fact that he got hurt. He was playing fine the first couple of games, then he got hurt. He's came back from the injury, and he's been playing not so hot. Now, this week against the Chicago Bears, I think he has a bounce-back game. It's going to be cold in Chicago. They're going to have to run the ball against the Chicago Bears defense, I believe. And Saquon Barkley should be able to jam it down their throats. He gets a lot of work in the pass game as well. So I have him top 10, but he is banged up going into this game. And I would be a little bit worried about that and the fact that he just hasn't looked all that hot. But no matter how many or how hurt he is, you still have to fucking play him. He could have one leg and I would roll Chica or Saquon Barkley out there against the Chicago Bears defense. And number five, we have Mr. Josh Jacobs of the Oakland Raiders going up against the New York football Jets. And Josh Jacobs has been playing quite well the last couple 
of games. Josh Jacobs looks like one of those guys that you drafted early, played well the whole season, and is going to be one of your fantasy football MVPs. You drafted him in like the fourth round. He's looking fucking phenomenal, looking a lot better than the other rookie running back, David Montgomery. Josh Jacobs this week against the New York Jets should be able to flourish in this matchup. A game that I predict could have potential to be a very high scoring one in the Meadowlands. At number six, we have Mr. Derrick Henry going against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, Derrick Henry is not much of an asset in PPR League because of the fact that he does not catch the ball. But the fact that he gets so much volume in the running game proves to me that he is worthy of a top 10 ranking, even in PPR formats. Last time, or a couple of games ago, we saw Derrick Henry play against the Jacksonville Jaguars. He torched the whole defense for a 99-yard or 100-yard beast quake-like touchdown. It was beautiful. It was amazing. It would make your eyes orgasm, okay? Derrick Henry was looking fucking phenomenal, and this week, he's playing up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Tennessee Titans like to run the damn ball like the Indianapolis Colts, and Derrick Henry is going to succeed in this game against the Jacksonville Jaguars, whose run defense is not all that great. At number seven, we have Ezekiel Elliott going against the New England Patriots. And in this game, the Patriots defense, I believe, will look pretty strong. But Ezekiel Elliott gets the rock fed to him, and he's going to be catching passes out of the backfield. Now, a lot of people are worried, oh, Nick, you know, Tony Pollard is really good, and they're going to keep using Tony Pollard more and more. Well, I think what's going to happen is they can't do that because the only time they fucking use Tony Pollard is when they're ahead in the game and they shove Tony Pollard in there, or when Ezekiel Elliott is gassed from running a train on a defense. Now, in this game, I believe that Ezekiel Elliott will get a lot of looks, a lot of opportunities to, to score, and we've seen the New England defense not look as hot the last couple of games, so I think that Ezekiel Elliott could strive in this game. At number 8, we have Le'Veon Bell going against the Oakland Raiders, and Le'Veon Bell has been playing pretty well the last couple of games. Obviously, you have to deal with the fact that Adam Gaze, the coach of the New York football giants, is a grade A fucktard, okay? He's a, he's an idiot, okay? But, 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 Le'Veon Bell has so much talent. Sam Sammy Mono, Sam Darnold loves to dump the ball off to Le'Veon Bell. And the way Le'Veon Bell has been looking, I see no reason for him not to be a top 10 back. He has so much talent. And this week against the Oakland Raiders, that defense that does not look all that hot, I see no reason why Le'Veon Bell could not perform. At number 9, we have Leonard Fournette, Leonard Fournette going up against the Tennessee Titans. Now, Leonard Fournette has been playing pretty well the last, or honestly, just this whole season. Due to the fact that he gets so much volume. Like Derrick Henry, they get so many touches every game that it's hard to rank them outside of the top 10. Leonard Fournette is going to be seeing an ass load of touches this game against the Tennessee Titans, and that obviously elevates him to his top 10 ranking. At number 10, we have Todd Gurley going against the Baltimore Ravens. Now, Todd Gurley, honestly, this season, he's been very up and down. When he finds that end zone, when he crosses that plane, you are very, very happy. In those games where he shits the bed, you are disappointed. Last week, Todd Gurley was getting all types of touches against the Chicago Bears. He got the most touches, or most yards, I believe, in the first quarter of a game that he has ever done. So it seems like they're trying to feed the beast Todd Gurley. And this week against the Baltimore Ravens, up against a tougher game, probably the toughest game the Rams will face all season in a game that they really need to win to turn the team around to look for that playoff push to potentially be a team that could be a Super Bowl contender. They're going to need Todd Gurley to be healthy. And they're going to need Todd Gurley to run the rock against the Baltimore Ravens for them to succeed. And for that reason, I got him at number 10 this week going against the Baltimore Ravens. And number 11, we have Jay Lynn Samuels going up against the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, James Conner is out in Sunday's matchup, so it's going to be pretty much the Jalen Samuels train. Juju likely missing as well. Deontay Johnson may not play as well, so it's probably just going to be the Vance McDonald and Jalen Samuels show. And Jalen Samuels, a few weeks ago, got above 15 targets, okay? Above 15 targets. That is unheard of. In this game against the Cincinnati Bengals, a god-awful defense, I see no reason that Jalen Samuels could not perform to be a top-12 guy. Now, I Obviously, 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 he is a lot better in PPR formats to the fact, like I said, he got 15 plus targets a few games ago. Now, if you're in standard league, he should be able to find the end zone enough for it to be worth you starting him, but obviously, he's a lot better of a PPR running back. At number 12, we have Mr. A.A. Ron Jones going against the San Francisco 49ers. Now, Aaron Jones has been pretty consistent all season. We've seen the last couple of games, them not commit to the run with both backs. It seems like it's been the Aaron Jones show the last couple of games. Mr. Matt LeFleur finally figured out that Aaron Jones is a lot better than Jamal Williams, but with that said, Matt LeFleur still has that love affair, and it may come back after their bye this week against the San Francisco 49ers, but I still like Aaron Jones, even against a tougher type of defense. Now, on to 13 through 24, so if you guys have enjoyed thus far, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. At number 13, we have Chris Carson going against the Philadelphia Eagles in Philadelphia. Now, this is going to 
prove to be a tough matchup for Chris Carson. The Philadelphia Eagles run defense is very good, but I think that Chris Carson will be able to play out of his mind in this game due to the fact that he gets so many receptions on that team. And I believe they will have to give him a lot of receptions in this game for them to succeed against the Eagles. Just running the ball on them is going to prove to be hard. So I think Chris Carson will perform in this game. But like I said, the Philadelphia Eagles run defense is so good that it lowers him out of the top 12. And number 14, we have Mr. Marky Mark Ingram. Go against the LA Rams. And Marky Mark Ingram ran and ran and ran last week and put up some nice yards and a touchdown in that game. And he looks quite good. This game against the LA Rams, it may be the same deal here. They're going to look to run the ball a lot, tire out the Rams, and absolutely eviscerate them come late. Later in the game, I like Mark Ingram in this game to be a number 14 and a top 15 running back in fantasy football this week. Coming in at number 15, we have Joe Mixon going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, even though the Cincinnati Bengals offense is atrocious and they look terrible, they have just committed to the run with one man, and his name is Joe Mixon. It could be first down, it could be second down, it could be third down, it could be fourth down, and they will run the ball with Joe Mixon. They want to get out of these games as fast as possible and lose every single game so that they could draft a new player at number one and start the organization completely over because Joe Mixon is getting touches when he should. Be. They'll be down 20 points. Here's the ball, Joe Mixon. They'd be down 50 points. Here's the ball, Joe Mixon. They could be down 3,000 fucking points, and Joe Mixon would just keep getting the rock. And for that reason alone, I love Joe Mixon this week, ranked number 15. At number 16, we have Mr. David Montgomery going against the New York Football Giants. Now, David Montgomery last week was banged up after rolling his ankle in practice last week, and he did not play all that well against the Rams. It was the Tariq Cohen show. This week, I think they go back to David Montgomery against a terrible New York Giants run defense, but I am worried because Tariq Cohen looks so good, and that's why David Montgomery has moved down. Otherwise, you may even have cracked the top 12 due to the fact that this matchup is so juicy. At number 17, we have the consistency king, James White, going against the Dallas Cowboys. So fucking consistent all season in the PPR format. James White looks to build on that consistency this week against the Dallas Cowboys, and I see no reason why he can't. They clearly like to dump the ball off to James White at every given opportunity. So I think James White has has a lot of, uh, su he succeeds pretty well this game against the Dallas Cowboys. And number 18, we have Devin Singletary going up against the Denver Broncos. Now, Devin Singletary honestly have had so many juicy matchups in a row and just has not been performing. He's been getting the touches, but old man Frank Gore still finds his way to fucking walk onto the field with his walker because he's an old man and get out there and play kind of good. And Devin Singletary lowers his touches. Now, Devin Singletary against the Denver Broncos. We're going to have to keep throwing him out there because he, he isn't really completely underperforming because he's still scoring you nine points, which isn't going to completely you, lose you a game. He's not putting up complete duds, but he's not scoring 15, 20 points like you could potentially see in these matchups. And against the Denver Broncos, I believe this is another juicy matchup, but I am worried about the fact that the team just likes to throw the ball so much in Buffalo. And number 19, we have Philip Lindsay going against the Buffalo Bills, and we've been seeing a lot of usage with Philip Lindsay and a lot less usage of Rolls Royce Freeman. Now, even with that said, I am a bit worried about Philip Lindsay, and I I have reasons to be worried. The fact is that even if they're lowering the touches of Rolls-Royce Freeman and he's not looking as effective, the fact is that they could just flip a switch, okay, and randomly Royce Freeman could get a lot of touches. That's just what happens. This team is dysfunctional. This team is stupid, and I think that that could happen, so I am a bit worried against the Buffalo defense that they do rely on Rolls-Royce Freeman, but at the end of the day, Philip Lindsay has been performing so well that I see no reason to rank him outside of the top 20. At number 20, we have Karate Kick Kareem Hunt going up against the my Ami Dolphins. Now, Kareem Hunt has been performing phenomenally in PPR formats. He's been catching so many balls. They don't even run the ball with him. Like, they gave 27 touches to Nick Chubb. They gave a couple of touches to Kareem Hunt last week. Okay, and they just dumped the ball off to him, and they let him go out wide as a wide receiver, and it's working out well for the Cleveland Browns. I think that they continue to do that, so in PPR formats, Kareem Hunt obviously gets a huge uptick, and that's why he's ranked at number 20 against a soft Miami Dolphins defense, but there are obviously guys that are going to be ranked above him due to the fact that they are getting a lot of touches both through the air and on the ground. At number 21, we have Mr. Tevin Coleman going up against the Green Bay Packers. Now, a lot of people, a lot of experts, they have Tevin Coleman ranked really high. Now, Tevin Coleman's ranking, to me, is 100% dependent on the fact if George Kittle plays or not. You can see it when George Kittle plays, the run blocking is so much better. The pass blocking is almost so much better when they fucking let him go and block, okay? Tevin Coleman is 
strictly going to be relying on the fact that George Kittle plays. If George Kittle does not play, Tevin Coleman will get zero work done on the ground, okay? That he's going to have to get it done through the pass. If Tevin, if George Kittle plays, that Tevin Coleman should be ranked even higher than this. But right now, when we don't know too much about George Kittle's health, I would, in a lot of situations, have Tevin Coleman ranked so low. And that is really just why. The Green Bay defense is not all that good against the run, the pass. But the fact is that if George Kittle is not there, I would be worried for Tevin Coleman. At number 22, we have Tariq the Beast Cohen, Mr. 5'6", going against the New York football giants. Now, Tariq Cohen really hasn't done shit all season. The last two games, he has honestly started to show his skill off. Now, David Montgomery was banged up in the last game. That was clearly obvious. That's why they didn't give the ball too much to David Montgomery. They let it run through Tariq Cohen. Now, in this game, I think David Montgomery is more healthy, so I'm going to rank Tariq Cohen lower for the reason I think they will use David Montgomery more. And number 23, Mr. Miles Sanders going against the Seattle Seahawks. And in this game, Jordan Howard is likely not going to get the nod to play in this game. So I like Miles Sanders in this game. Now, they're saying Jay Ajayi is going to get a decent workload, but that's okay because Miles Sanders is the pass catching back on the team, and I think he's will still get a rush, uh, opportunities to rush the ball. I like him against the Seattle Seahawks this week. Ranked lower, though, due to the fact that Jay Ajayi may get a shit ton of touches. At number 24, we have Mr. Bo Scarborough going against the Washington Redskins. Now, it seems like that the Detroit Lions are committed to Bo Scarborough. Now, I am worried. He's ranked lower because of the fact that they are are dealing with a committee situation in Detroit. They got Bo Scarborough, J.D. McKissick, as well as Mr. Ty Johnson. I think that Bo Scarborough will get a majority of the touches, but it seemed like it was going to be J.D. McKissick this or last week, and then it was Bo Scarborough, so it's quite confusing out there in Detroit, but I I will have Bo Scarborough ranked top 24 because I think that the potential is really there against the Washington Redskins. Now into 25 through 32. So if you guys have enjoyed thus far, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. At number 25, we have the other running back in that game, Darius Geis going against the Detroit Lions. And now while AP is still getting touches and AP will still get work in this game, it seems like the Darius Geis show. Darius Geis showed off his speed, scoring a big touchdown in that game. I think Darius Geis does look good and if he can stay healthy, will be a guy that will crack the top 24 in the future, but right now his health does worry me. It seems like every single game he could just go out there and blow out his leg, break his fucking foot break his spine. I have no idea because he just always ends up getting hurt, but at the end of the day, Darius Geis is ranked at number 25 due to the fact that he has a good matchup this week, but the fact is the Washington Redskins are so bad that it definitely limits his upside. At number 26, we have Mr. Ronald Jones going against the Atlanta Falcons. Now, Peyton Barber last week was the running back to own in Buffalo, not Buffalo, in Tampa Bay. Now, it's very confusing because every single week, it seems like a completely different story for this Buccaneers team. One week, it'll be Ronald Jones. The next week, it'll be Peyton Barber. The next week, it'll be Dare Agabaduge. Okay, every single week it's just very confusing over there. Bruce Arian says Ronald Jones is the starter, so I'm going to go ahead and just fire Ronald Jones out there at number 26. But the fact that they have a committee is very confusing, so that's why he's ranked so low. At number 27, we have Sony Michelle going against the Dallas Cowboys, and it seems like in this game they're going to have to pass a lot because it may be closer a closer game, so Sony Michelle won't get as much work. And if Sony Michelle doesn't score a touchdown, he's going to disappoint you. So that's why I have him ranked at number 27. At number 28, we have Mr. Brian Hill going against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and Brian. Hill took a shit in your lineup last week. You need the huggies for him because of how big of a disappointment he truly was. Now this week, he gets the Buccaneers, a tough, tough, tough run defense, one of the best run defenses in the league, so I'm obviously worried again for that. He should have scored a touchdown last week, but they called it back for holding. So this week, maybe he scores a touchdown and he's okay, but they are using a lot of backs on that team, so it's very confusing, so I have a ranked at number 28. Number 29, we have Jamal Williams going against the San Francisco 49ers, and like I said, Matt LaFleur has kind of committed to Aaron Jones recently. But with that said, I still think that Jamal Williams could perform. If he gets more touches in this game against the San Francisco 49ers, I like him in this game. Obviously, you have to worry about the touches, and that's why he's ranked so low. But you could definitely do a lot worse than Mr. Jamal Williams. At number 30, we have Mr. Kalen Balazs going against the Cleveland Browns. Now, it's tough to start Kalen Balazs every single week because the Dolphins don't like to run the ball. They just like to pass the ball because they're always down in the game. So Kalen Balazs is, temp is uh, obviously hindered by that. And the fact that he's so fucking bad is also hurt by that. 
that. But at the end of the day, Kalen Balaj is just good enough to be ranked at number 30. And if he ends up scoring a touchdown, he would obviously be elevated higher than that. Coming in at number 31, we have J.D. McKissick. Now, like I said, it's pretty confusing over there in Detroit. It seems like Bo Scarborough is going to be the lead back on the team. But I still think that J.D. McKissick gets enough work through the passing game that he would warrant being a top 32 guy. And my final ranking, number 32, Rolls-Royce Freeman. Going against the Buffalo Bills. Now, Rolls-Royce Freeman has taken a seat to Philip Lindsay the last couple of games, but we know that the coaching over there, like I said, is a bit stupid. And Rolls-Royce Freeman may end up getting more touches in this game against the Buffalo Bills. And below number 32, there's just a bunch of shit. So if you're stuck with Rolls-Royce Freeman, you could definitely do a lot worse. So thank you guys all for watching this video. If at any point you ended up enjoying, please make sure to click that subscribe button down below. I love each and every single one of you guys so much. Make sure to check out overlaydfs.com down in the description. Goodbye, my friends.